So for those of you that are new to the channel, every now and then I do a thing called the Cusco Uncut, and it's just like it sounds, it's just an uncut video. And uh, when I feel like I have a subject that I'd like to talk about in some kind of depth or in, that I'm really feeling strongly about or whatever, sometimes it ends up being like a two minute video and I'll make it a segment of one of the vlogs or sometimes it'll end up being long enough for its own whole video. I can go ahead and say with pretty much 99% certainty this one's gonna be its own whole video. So before I get into what happened this morning and yesterday, last night, uh, I, I wanna talk about where my addiction started. Well, I've always had an addiction, addictive personality, like with healthy things and semi-healthy things like you know ice cream or whatever it was. And I learned to play guitar, locked myself in my bedroom for like a year and, and learned how to play really well, really fast or you know, whatever relatively so, I guess. Um, but, so I've, I've touched on this mildly in a couple of videos. Uh, like, let me gather myself. Maybe I should have written some things down. But I've touched on a couple of these things mildly before in videos. You know, the, the topic is out, out there. But I never went into depth about it. But based on the experience I had in the last 24 hours, I figured it was probably about time to do that. And the reason that I do these videos like this and is... There's a number of reasons. A, I'm not looking for some kind of support, I'm not looking for sympathy. I'm simply making this video because I think it'll probably help somebody. It'll definitely help me to just kind of vent a little bit and uh, just kind of, it's therapeutic for me to, to speak about these things and, and reflect on them afterwards. And I hope that it's benefiting uh, other people out there as well uh, who have maybe had similar experiences and just to feel like somebody else is out there dealing with it too. Or even if it's, uh, <laughs> I don't even care if it's just so, some of you be like, oh, look at that guy's got problems. I'm glad I don't have those problems. Like, if that's the thing, sure, whatever, man. As long as uh, somebody's getting something out of it, then that's, that's the other extra benefit. But, okay, so when I was in my early 20s, it was the first time I had an experience with uh, methamphetamines. And I didn't know what they were at the time. I just knew that a couple of guys that I had smoked weed with before, um, well, many times were doing it in the Taco Bell bathroom and to their credit they were like no you don't know you're not doing this like we're not going to let you but I was persistent as I am with anything that I decide I, I'm going to do um, and so I, I did with them and it didn't really hit me like maybe it hits a lot of people like also when I used to drink coffee on a rare occasion when I was younger I would just fall asleep so things were different for me I guess than your average uh, person has reactions to things so it wasn't a big deal at first, and uh, you know I, I did other things. I went on. I was still still playing music and doing this and that. And uh, but at some point, it really it grabbed me. Like one of the times I did it, it was just like you, you're coming with me now, boy. You're gonna take this ride, and uh, it was it was rough, and it was a long process to get off of it. I never went to any sort of rehab facilities or any 12-step programs or anything like that. Obviously, I did get off of it. it I came out fairly unscathed, I'd like to think. Uh, you know, I'm not missing any teeth. Uh, I never resorted to stealing from people or burglarizing or, or violent crime or anything like that to pay for my addiction. Uh, I had a job, you know, I had a couple different jobs throughout the process. And... Uh, I still don't really know. I like to think it was because I had such a nice, strong family uh, basis is what eventually helped me to get off of it without having some kind of program or some kind of external help. Um, but it was a long process. I'd say it probably took a, a good solid year before I finally did it for the last time. You know, I would go and I, I went on tour with the band for months and had thought I'd been done. You know, I decided, okay, I'm done. Like, I'm not doing this anymore. It's going to ruin my life if I just keep going down this path. And then we passed back through my hometown on tour and found one of those old pads that had meth and did it and uh, ended up like having to leave the band shortly after that and fell down the hole. That's when I fell down really hard. It's like I tried to quit for a few months and successfully and then fell right back in it. And then I tried again uh, times after that to, to quit unsuccessfully where I would like what I thought I was being successful. Like I would go to places where I knew people were doing it. And I would sit amongst them and like while they were doing drugs and smoking meth, I would do push-ups like every time they'd take a hit. That's one example of some things I would do. And uh, 
it's like, oh, I must, I must have a beat. Like I'm here with these people that are, I could easily like hit a pipe, but instead I'm doing push-ups, and I would go, and it would be a whole solid day, maybe even a whole week, or longer of that. But then eventually, somewhere down the line, I'd find myself going back to get high again, uh, and that went on, like I said, for about a year. That whole process, much to the detriment, I'm sure, of outside watching friends and family, um, and again no blame to be put on anybody else outside because when I'm st it's what I do is 100% up to me and nobody can stop me from doing whatever it is I have my mind that I'm going to do like anybody that knows me well knows that that's a fact um but luckily I did I don't again I don't know what it was that that finally clicked but I was home by myself in an apartment and I'd been clean you know for maybe several months at this point and I found a pipe with drugs in it in an old jacket in a closet. And I was home by myself. And I looked at it, I lit it, and like watched it do its little dance and was like, oh my God. And then I went and got a sock out of the drawer, put it in the sock, rolled it up, stepped on it, threw it away. And in that moment, even though I didn't know it 100%, if, in that moment I was like, okay, I'm, I'm done. Like, like, I'm not going back. And it was... And that was about 15 years ago, roughly. I stopped counting after about eight, but it was, I was in my, like, 23 or 24. Um, so, yeah, about, about that amount of time ago. And you guys know that they have watched the, the recent videos, the very recent videos, like yesterday, the day before yesterday, or whatever. Um, this video is going up on Sunday. So I'm, if I'm not down in the comments today, the day goes up, it's because we're doing the, you know, the no, no cell phone thing. But... Uh, so the doctor gave me uh, Norco, which is says right on the cap in big red letters, it's an opioid, which I think kind of went along with what with what happened a little bit. But I had kind of made up my mind that I wasn't gonna use them for pain, but it got kind of gnarly, and I was like, oh, I'll just take one, and it, it was fine. And then the next day came, and then I found myself planning to take more the next night, even regardless of how I was feeling pain-wise. I was like, oh, I'm gonna take more, and. Uh, somewhere in that process man like the house wasn't quite clean and like things were just kind of building up i was feeling stressed i was feeling pain and uh i just kind of lost it like emotionally i just i just lost it and uh just frustrated with the house not being clean frustrated with this and that and just kind of lost my temper and more than just lost my temper like i, I was i started getting really emotional and uh just like slamming stuff and basically having an episode that I hadn't had in 15 years and then <laughs> me and Hillary got into it she was like you should be filming a video right now so you can watch this back and like see how you're acting right now and I she didn't know at the time like what it was that was going through like in her mind all it was is that the house wasn't clean and I was freaking out about it which is all I really communicated because when I really really need help sometimes in those moments like I'm really bad at asking for it um so that, that kind of, that went on, she went to sleep, didn't want to talk to me, um, understandably so. And I went ahead and took a couple more of those, uh, what are they called, they're Norco. So they're, they're like a, you know, the prescribed opiate or whatever. And uh, just had all these thoughts of these different songs and playing music, playing like <laughs> Neil Young songs and all these different uh, opiate influenced musics. And uh, woke up this morning, it was just like, I already had a plan in my head that tonight I was gonna take more, regardless of how I was feeling. And while I was talking with Hillary about how I'd been acting last night and like what I think caused it, I kind of realized that this is like, like I'm kind of going into a relapse thing here, even though I was never really addicted to any kind of opiates or whatever, I was going into some kind of relapse mode and uh, just c kind of really broke down and when I kind of realized what was happening, because I hadn't felt like that, and again, in like a decade and a half, having that feeling of like, that I was gonna lose control of everything and like just spiral out of control. And uh, yeah, I've already got it all out, so I don't need to, I, I poured plenty of emotions out in the last 24 hours. I'm just grateful that I have all this support, um, not just from you guys, of course, but like just in general, like family support so that um, I can, just know that I'm good. Like I told Hillary, you know what, take those things and just throw them away so I don't have the option to take them tonight. And I'm just gonna like nip this in the butt before it even really becomes a thing, you know? 
uh, which is definitely the best move, right? Obviously. Uh, so, but I really want to share it with you guys because, hell, the number one reason that I like to share every little aspect of my life is because I spent so much of my life closed off from the world. And also, because especially when it comes to these different social media platforms or these social platforms, Facebook, Instagram, obviously everybody wants to share all the good stuff, and that's great. But I do know that that leads to people um, subconsciously, if not consciously, comparing themselves to others. And if and obviously when you're when you're doing the sharing of these things, a lot of times everybody wants to share the good stuff that's happening because why wouldn't you? Like it's great. It's like look, look at this awesome thing that's happening right here. But the side effect, the negative side effect, is that is that it does have that effect on people who might not be having it so great. And so I think that it's very very beneficial for people to be able to see all of the sides of life in in any one given channel like the one I have here. That because we're all people and. Every single person out there has problems. Everybody has problems. We all have problems. Whether we share them or not, we have them. And I think it helps to just make it a little easier to know that you're not alone dealing with problems. And yeah, simple as that. That's the number one reason I decided to make this video on top of just getting it out and off my chest and putting it out there. And also because I feel great that, I, that it was that quick. That it was literally like a 24-hour period. I was like, I'm going to fall into some kind of horrible addiction hole here that I haven't been in in, in like almost the, as long as, you know, 15 years. To be able to recognize it right away and freaking stop it before it got anywhere close to out of control like it did 15 years ago. Um, yeah, and that's, that's it, guys. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I just be thankful you're alive and look to the good things in your life that you have going on because chances are whether you see them or not, they're there. Uh, if not, uh, give me a call and I'll tell you why they are there. I wouldn't be the first time I walked somebody off a cliff. Uh, yeah. All right. Here's to many more great days of uh, good stuff. Right on, guys.